The devil has one overarching message that he's been saying over and over and over and over for so long in this culture, and that is this. Love yourself. Love yourself. Follow your dreams. Follow your truth. Follow your passions. Follow your desires, your future, your destiny. Be proud of yourself, he says. The entire month devoted to pride. And Christians sadly have taken the bait. They've taken the poison. They've become consumers like the rest of the world, feeding their flesh, feeding their self. And I was one of them. Before the Lord caught my heart, I was one of them. I would spend my days consuming, consuming YouTube videos. Even if they're preachers and teachers, it's still consuming, 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 sitting and watching TV, YouTube, Netflix, Hulu, whatever it is, it's consuming. It's always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. It's being a hearer of the word and not a doer of the word, deceiving ourselves. We are called for so much more. If you are free from your sin, if the Lord has transformed your heart, you have the keys. If you are reborn, transformed, new creature in Christ, he has given you the keys to the kingdom. You have the ability to go out and free people. How selfish are we if we were to sit in a room and consume when the west, rest of the world is headed to hell to burn eternally? I'll give you a story. This is actually a true story, and I pray I get all the details right. But there was a firefighter who had a call to go to a burning house. Inside was a mother and her two children. When the firefighter arrived, he had the hose with the water. He had all the ability to put out that fire. But instead, when he arrived, he sat in his fire truck and began to play with the radio and his phone. He began to play with the radio and listen to songs and waste time while the child, children and the mother burned alive inside the building. He had the full ability, he had the authority, he had the job, he had the calling to get off his butt and to get the fire hose and put out the fire. But instead he sat and consumed. Okay, we recognize that that is wicked. That is wicked. I believe he went to prison. If human justice that is flawed punishes someone for something like that, for not doing their job while other people burn and suffer, how much more will the righteous judge judge you and me if we sit and consume day after day after day, video after video, teaching after teaching, while the, word, while the whole world is lit up in flames and people fall into eternal hell? How much more, how much greater will we be judged? We who took our light and hid it under a basket. We who took our town and buried it in the sand. And he comes back and he says, you wicked and lazy servant. Wicked and lazy. That's what he'll say to a consuming Christian. You could say, well, I follow the Lord. I listen to sermons all day long. Okay, good. What are you doing with that? That's worthless if in the end it doesn't bear fruit. You're always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And the truth is that you are called to a higher purpose. You and I are called to a higher purpose. Let the rest of the world consume, not God's chosen people, not his holy people. We are called to redeem the time. We are called to be the influencers and not be influenced. We are called to be the salt and the light of this world. We are called to take the keys of the kingdom and unlock person after person by God's power through us. Unlocking person after person, bringing many souls to glory. That is my call. That is your call. We were all given the great commission to go into all the world, baptizing and preaching and teaching them to obey all that he has commanded to make disciples. That is your call. That is my call. 
Have you done that today? Did you do that yesterday? Did you do that day before? Or did you consume, consume, consume and trick yourself being a hearer of the word and not a doer of the word, deceiving yourself as James says. Our time is short. It is so short. The darkness has taken over. It's like a thick blanket over the world. The evil is thick. Witches, warlocks, witchcraft, disgusting practices, pornography have literally taken over the world, especially the Western world. And yet God's people are sitting on their butts, playing with their phone, while the people inside the building are burning. We have the ability. We are the firefighters. You are a firefighter. You are trained. You are equipped. You have the fire hose with the water of the Holy Spirit to put out those fires. To save people from eternal torture in hell. And yet in our wickedness and laziness, the church has sat on their butt and become a consumer. Always learning. Sermon after sermon. Vision. Hearing all the visions and all the prophecies and all the sermons. And believing that that is somehow going to bring the world to Jesus. No, you're a consumer and the devil is just fine with you sitting and consuming as long as you never act on it. If you say, well, I'm too old or I'm, I'm paralyzed or I I can't do this. I can't do that. So I can't go and tell the world. Then I say this, then spend your time in prayer because being a prayer warrior is a mighty thing. You can bring so many souls to the kingdom just by praying and praying and praying. You are called to pray like you've never prayed before. If you are not able to physically get up and go somewhere to tell anyone about Jesus, even if it's walking around your neighborhood, doing whatever it is that the Holy Spirit will lead you, but you are called for a purpose and a plan, a destiny that was chosen before the foundations of the earth for you, for you. You are not, if we were, if it was just about us, then the moment we get saved, the Lord would pull us up to heaven so that he wouldn't risk losing us again if we fall away. He would just beam us up to heaven, right? But we're not saved for ourselves, just ourselves. We're saved to go and save others by his power through us. We sow, we water, he brings the increase. It's a partnership. We do it together. And if our end is flat and unfaithful, And burying our talent and hiding our light under a bushel. What happens? We have to redeem the time. The days are so evil. The days are so evil. Redeem the time. Write down how many hours you spend in prayer, reading the word, fasting, seeking his face going and telling the world, bringing people to him, write down how many hours you do that versus how many hours you sit on Facebook and YouTube and listen to sermons or teachings or whatever. Day after day after day. And think from Jesus' perspective. Jesus did not get tortured and tormented for you to sit on your butt. We were called to take up our cross. If we don't deny ourselves, pick up our cross and follow him, he said, you can't be my disciple. He said, many are going to come to me on that day, but only those who do the will of the Father. He said, only those who do the will of the Father, those who know Jesus, and those who are not in sin are going to make it. He said, only those who do the will of my Father can enter. Many are going to say to me on that day, Lord, didn't we do miracles and cast out demons? And he's saying, no, I never knew you. Depart from me, worker of sin, worker of iniquity. You have to do the will of the Father. You have to deny yourself, pick up your cross, follow him. You have to sell all you have, give to the poor. You have to fully surrender. And that includes your life if you are constantly just consuming media, YouTube, hours a day. Then you are wasting your life. That is not the call that he had for you. And it is dangerous ground. If we, as a society, righteously judge the person who let those children die while they sat in their car, how much more will the righteous judge in heaven judge us who let the world go to hell when we were called to go out 
and tell them about Jesus, but instead we sat down. Their blood is on our hands. I don't want that. I don't want that. When I get to heaven, I want a huge crowd there saying, God used you to tell us the gospel, and because of that, we are in the kingdom now. And we get to rejoice together. That's what I want when I get to heaven, is to see the people that God used me to influence, to bring to to glory, to disciple, to tell about Jesus. I want the whole crowd there to say and hear my Lord say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of my rest. We are called to so much more. We're called to be ground shakers. We're called to be this salt and this light, this thing that the world sees and they come running because they're in darkness and they say, we need the light. We see the city on the hill. We see your light shining like bright stars in this crooked and depraved generation and they come to us. But right now, everybody's sitting in their houses consuming media Instead of being on your knees on your free time and praying and seeking his face and reading his word, the free time is spent consuming, listening to videos and visions and prophecies and this and that and this and that. And those things aren't bad if they're done in moderation. It's good to listen to a biblical teaching, but not if it's day after day, hour after hour while the world burns. The devil is totally fine with you sitting there and just consuming, getting fat off this knowledge And never going out and telling people about Jesus. Never actually freeing people. Never depopulating hell. We are called to deny ourselves. The world says follow your dreams. Do what you want. Be proud of you. And God says deny yourself. Pick up your cross. Follow me. We go from a world centered around us to a world centered around Jesus denying us crucifying the flesh and its passions and desires. You, every day, you may want to sit and consume and watch videos and watch sermons because it's relaxing. You may want to just keep going with your normal job and making your money and coming home and flipping on the TV, flipping on YouTube and just vegging out for a couple hours. You may want to do that, but you are called to deny yourself, your will, your passions, your desires. You're supposed to cry out and say, not my will, but yours be done. Every day I will pick up this cross and I will follow him. If you are not freed from your sin, all your free time should be spent in fasting, prayer, and reading the word until he frees you. That's all your free time should be. And then once you are freed, your free time should be actively every day pursuing the Lord, pursuing his will, his purposes, because life is like this and it's gone. Gone. I like this analogy. Picture yourself sitting in a vast ocean, a vast ocean. Deep as the eye could see, (laughs) deeper than you could ever imagine. As far as the eye can see, in every direction, a vast ocean. Then you pick up one little drop of water. Doop. That's your life on this earth. In the vast ocean of eternity, one tiny little drop. Doop. That's your life on this earth. It's boop and it's gone. But yet, what you did in that tiny drop of time, that tiny drop of water, this life on this earth will impact all of eternity, the vast ocean. All the vast ocean depends on what you do with this tiny drop of water. Or like Francis Chan's analogy of the long rope with the one red dot at the end. The red dot is your life here on earth. The long rope is eternity. And yet so many live for that red dot or for that drop of water. And ignore the vast ocean. They ignore the rest of the rope. They ignore eternity. I have to every day put my eyes on him. On things above. Hold every thought captive. Seek him with all my heart. Focus on bringing people to the kingdom. Discipling people. My money is no longer my money. It's meant for his purposes. Okay. 
I don't have money anymore. It's all his. It just passing through my hands. I said, where do you want me to do with it, Lord? Okay, my time is not my time anymore. I was bought at a price. You were bought with a price. His very blood. Okay, so your time every day, you're given an allotment. You're meant to crucify it and give it back to Jesus. Crucify your flesh, your passion and desire. You were given an allotment of time every day. And you were meant to take that time and give it to Jesus. Every day. But instead, the church takes that time and gives it to self, which is really just giving it to the devil. Because selfishness is a thing of the devil. It's not a thing of God. The devil is after that time. This time that you're given every day. We're all given the same 24 hours in a day. We're given the same time period. What will you do with yours? This give It's a gift. So you have 24 hours today. And every day. You can either just waste it and put it on yourself. Or you can give it to Jesus and say, it's all yours. I'm going to do your will today. I'm going to seek your face. I'm going to pray. I'm going to read your word. And I'm going to go and tell the world about you. I'm going to be your witness. I'm going to be your prayer warrior. The devil wants you to take that time and just give it to him or just throw it away. Every day, he's after your time. That's why there's so much online to take your time to make you a consumer to just take your time and go whoop 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 all gone like sand in an hourglass it's all gone all done you ran out and at the end of your life what do we have to show for it every day i want to take the time he's given me and redeem it i'm going to take the talent and i'm not going to bury it I'm going to multiply it for the kingdom. I'm going to bear much fruit. I'm going to tell anyone and everyone. I'm going to be his witness. I'm going to be in communion with him. Doing his will and his purposes every day. Denying myself. Picking up my cross. Following him. That's our call. That's our purpose. That's our destiny. Every single day. God bless you guys.